Dear friends, good evening, and thank you for joining us once again this week for one more Gnostic Lab for Practical Application. And this week, we are going to put into practice the Room Fa. Those of you who have been partaking with us in our first chamber lectures, by now you must have already completed our seminar in the magic of the runes, and you have been made fully acquainted with the practices and the mysteries behind these magical characters. Suffice it to say that these characters were given to humanity uh, not directly to the Aryan race, but to elder humanities by one of those most powerful archangels. And behind each and every one of the runic characters, what we find is a profound amount of symbol and wisdom. And in particular, the character for the rune Fa that is associated with our divine goddess, Mother Space. We have perhaps a little bit of we're going to be sharing with you tonight about what is this thing, the rune Fa. And after we give that brief introduction, we will share with you what is the objective visualization that we're going to be practicing. You would remember that when we do exercises of objective imagination, we are indeed exercising our faculty of clairvoyance. Because Samael tells us everyone is more or less clairvoyant, just like everyone else is more or less imaginative. So as we do our a uh, briefing on what is the effort on objective imagination, we will review the beautiful, short, concise, and profound prayer that we will be reciting as we do this exercise. We will review the posture, the mantras, and then we're just going to do the rune. And together, we will put this rune into practice for a few minutes. Uh, and it doesn't matter how many minutes, because the more effort we put into these things, the better the results that we generate. The more we practice and the more diligent we become, that only adds to certainty and results. And that is all crucial and necessary for us to be able to crystallize our faith. So when it comes to the rune Fa, all of the runic characters we can mimic with the postures of our body. And as you know by now, when we refer to postures, we are speaking about asanas. Asanas in the in the language of uh, the Middle Eastern uh, cultures, we know that it means exactly that. It is posture. And when we are replicating the room fa with our body, we will assume a posture just like the one that you see on the screen. We will be standing pretty much at attention without locking our knees, and we will be raising our arms forward, the left arm slightly higher than the right one. The palms, they can be facing forward, ideally facing forward. If you were to have some kind of problem with your wrist or some kind of problem with your forearm and you could not do that, then there is no problem. If, if you physically cannot do it, it would be very unwise of us to think that the great masters would penalize you and deprive you of the benefits of doing this practice. Certainly that is not going to happen. So as we stand in this posture, again, standing on the posture of attention without flexing our knees and locking them, uh, raising our arms so that the hands are facing towards the east. Left arm slightly higher than the right one. What we do is that we set ourselves in such a posture that it allows us to receive very graciously those cosmic vibrations that inundate our atmosphere. Early in the morning, when we practice this rune, well, we would be saturating not only our physicality, but shocking our consciousness with atoms of very high crystal voltage. And these atoms would certainly energize the consciousness to the degree that it shocks it. And that is what we need. We need that additional 
source of power, particularly the one that we receive from the sun every day so that we can make that energy available for our spiritual practice. And Samayo tells us when we get out of bed with immense happiness, we must, we must salute each new day by raising our arms towards our Lord, the Son, Christ. Remember, Samael teaches this at the intermediate levels. This is part of his book, The Esoteric Treatise on the Magic of the Runes. And these are books that are of an intermediate to advanced level. And when he refers to the Son Christ, this may shock some of you. Because it is likely that as you hear the word Christ, you immediately see a mental formation that has to do with a Middle Eastern man of long hair and a long beard, dressed in white robes, capable of walking over the waters, of turning water into wine, and with faculties of returning the sight to the blind, the hearing to the deaf, and of course the life to the dead. But we have to expand our level of understanding. And as we nourish our intellectual culture with the doctrine and the teaching of Gnosis, as we develop the discipline that corresponds to that increased or more superior intellectual culture, we start understanding better that the Christ indeed is not a man that the Christ is a cosmic force. In the Tree of Life of the Kabbalah, the Christ is known as the manifestations that exist within the... The sphere of Chokmah is the sphere of the cosmic Christ, and it exists within the realm of potentialities. It is right there, the sphere of the realm of the Son. The Son, as in the Father, the Son... Of the Holy Spirit. And Christ men, there have been many throughout the histories of mankind because there has been Quetzalcoatl as that Christified man that came to deliver wisdom to those cultures in Central America. There is also Hermes Trismegistus, the thrice great grand god Ibis of Toph. Christified three times, that great man who descended into the halls of Amenti and who helped raise the very beginnings of what we know today as the Aryan race. And just like them, there has been, of course, the Buddha, Christified. There has been the great master, Jesus, Christified. There has been Paracelsus. And Knowing that there are different men who have achieved this degree of Christification, it is a good idea that we start disconnecting that the Christ is just one single face in our mind, and rather a title that those who achieve certain levels of being are able to receive. So Samael tells us when we get out of bed with immense happiness, we must salute each day by raising our arms towards our Lord the Son Christ. And this is something that we should develop a habit in doing. Raising our arms in the morning, breathing in, and receiving that Christic force so that we can start putting that cosmic energy to good practice since early in the morning. Samad also tells us this is the sacred posture of the Rune Fa. Thus, this is the method in order for us to work with Pranayama by inhaling the air through the nose and exhaling it through the mouth. Pranayama is one of those Sanskrit words, and if we were to translate it uh, very literally, it would mean the harnessing of the winds. But what we are doing uh, is that every time that we see this word pranayama, we have to default our thinking into knowing that it is a breathing exercise. And notice that we are inhaling through our nose. So as we stand at attention without locking our knees and we raise our arms early in the morning or at night to the starry sky and we allow the left arm to rise slightly higher than the right one, we inhale through the nose and in our exhalation, instead of just exhaling the air, 
blindly. We will do exhalations by consuming the air and putting it to use to chant the mantras of the rune Fa. Samael says, let us imagine in those instances that the light of the sun Christ penetrates within us through the fingers of our hands and then it circulates through our arms it inundates the whole organism and finally reaches the consciousness and as we are inhaling we can inhale with our eyes closed with the depth of the breathing we can at the same time simultaneously see how with that inhalation all of this crystic energy starts electrifying and going in through the tips of the fingers through your hands and your forearms and your arms and then it fills your body with all of this crystic energy finally striking deep into the consciousness and by then you have filled your lungs to good capacity and in the exhalation we recite the following prayer and it says marvelous forces of love revive my sacred fires so that my consciousness may awaken immediately followed by the mantras of the runfa Fa. And this completes one cycle. By then, it is likely that some of you may feel some discomfort in your shoulders. It is perfectly fine if at that moment you need a little rest. Take a little break. Drop your arms and shake them. Allow that blood to flow back into your extremities. And after a few seconds of recovery, raise your arms once again. Take a deep breath and recite that prayer again. Marvelous forces of love revive my sacred fire so that my consciousness may awaken and once again repeat the mantras by the time you're done give your shoulders and your arms another little micro pause a little break shake them raise your arms again and chant it all over again this dear friends is the practice of the runfa it is very useful when we unite our objective imagination and our willpower in vibrant harmony. Because when we combine those two together and we make an effort to see those cosmic forces penetrating through our fingers and into our bodies, we also start occupying the mind in activities that are edifying and essentially dignifying and then we're not doing the practice mechanically because in this practice just like in any other practice we take from them exactly what we bring into the exercise if we get here with reluctance and with uh, naysaying and if we lack of uh, interest and we are just not invested into the well we, there's very little that we're going to get out of it but the more effort we put into it, the more diligent we become, the better the results become. So let's go ahead and let's do this practice together. <clears throat> let's go ahead and stand up. And as we stand, you please let me know on the screen if you notice that there is a degradation in the quality of the audio. Uh, we're going to stand and we're going to stand facing east. This is a practice, again, that we can do early in the morning or that we can do at night with our arms also facing towards the east. During the day, we receive all of that, all of those cosmic forces that come to us directly from the sun Christ 
And at night, we continue to receive all of those very subtle energies that reach us from all of the constellations and the planets and not necessarily the bodies, but the archetypes of these. And they certainly are looking at helping us and helping nourish our consciousness. So as we stand facing east, let's cross our arms and our chest, the right hand over the left. And let's go ahead and close our eyes. And let's take a deep breath in one, two, one, Two. One. Two. And as always, let's take a moment and let's invoke the powerful assistance of our innermost by saying, Divine Father, Father of mine, you who are my true being, you who are my internal God, we ask of you, we beg of you, of your powerful assistance. We ask that you awaken in us the faculties of imagination, inspiration, and intuition, so that we can see beyond the appearance of things, so that we can understand the significance of things and the reasons behind the things without having to rely on the processes of thought. We ask that you guide us through this exercise. And we ask that you allow for these cosmic forces to strike deep within our consciousness and awaken. <clears throat> With that, we can open our eyes, we can stand our attention. Your heels do not have to be together if it is a little uncomfortable for you. Just make sure that you do not lock your knees. And we raise our arms towards the east. The left one higher than the right one. The palms facing towards the horizon. And together we say, marvelous forces of love. Revive my sacred fires so that my consciousness may awaken. Give your arms a little rest. So drop your arms and shake. <clears throat> and let's do this without letting go of that remembrance of self. And again in that in that attitude of reverence and veneration towards our innermost, we raise our arms again and together we say, marvelous forces of love. Revive my sacred fire so that my consciousness may awake.
maintain the attitude of veneration, we consciously, willfully make an effort to complete the objective visualization. And we raise our arms once again. Marvelous forces of love. Revive my sacred fires so that my consciousness may awaken. gratitude and in gratefulness we receive this as a new opportunity so that we can open ourselves to that which is now so that we can make use of these cosmic powers that are available to us powers that are superior to the mind and that are so useful and so beneficial for our internal work we once again raise our arms towards the horizon, palms facing forward, the left one slightly higher than the right one. Marvelous forces of love. Revive my sacred fires so that my consciousness may awaken. and shake them once again. <clears throat> and not getting distracted with any noises or conversations that may be happening around us. 
we continue maintaining that remembrance of self. And in a deep state of gratefulness, we once again raise our arms towards the horizon. And together we say, Marvelous forces of love, revive my sacred fire so that my consciousness may awake. our arms and we remember that every time that we're chanting each and every one of these vowels the letter A brings harmonious vibration to the chakras that exist within our lungs and this allows for a much better transfer of that prana that exists in each inhalation that we take the letter A allows for the harmonious vibration of the chakra in our larynx, which is a creative organ as we all create with the power of the word. The letter I, that sounds E, allows for the vibration of the chakras in our head, where we have not only that lotus flower of a thousand petals at the crown of our head, but also a chakra that is another flower with 96 petals right in between our eyebrows. The letter O allows for the vibration of the chakra in our heart. And the letter U brings harmonious vibration to the chakra in our solar plexus. Because it is in our solar plexus where we have our telepathic center. It is there where not only we receive those telepathic signals, but we also have the spleen, which is not only the foundation of our ethereal body, but that organ responsible of capturing the subtle rays of the sun, and at night, distributing those energies throughout the different glands of our endocrine system. Let's go ahead <clears throat> and do our seventh round. So in gratitude and in gratefulness, we continue facing east and we raise our arms, the left one slightly higher than the right one, and we say, marvelous forces of love, revive my sacred fire so that my consciousness may awaken.
arms and we shake them. <coughs> we once again cross our arms and our chest, the right one over the left, and we say, Divine Father, we give you infinite thanks for the opportunity to put to practice this rule. We ask that you enliven in us the necessary willpower so that we can continue with these efforts. And we ask that you, through your presence, wake us our consciousness give you infinite thanks once we have done that we can close the exercise by doing a persignation which is the very same as tracing the sign of the cross from our forehead to our heart to the left shoulder and to the right shoulder followed by the microcosmic star so as we continue facing towards the east, we slightly open our legs and spread our arms to the right and the left, making the shape of a five-pointed star. We bring our arms together above our head until the fingertips touch each other, and then we lower our hands as we bring them down into our shoulders, we touch our shoulders, and we extend our arms once again to the side in a motion as is symbolizing that we are dragging or pulling from the heavens a blessing as if we were pulling into our head those cosmic forces then we allow our arms just to come down along the sides in a circular motion and as we do that we bring our feet together and we bring our hands crossed in our chest, again the left one under the right one. Once we are in this posture, we trace a circle starting in our forehead, down into our left shoulder, down into our solar plexus, up into our right shoulder, and up in our forehead once again. And we say by the almighty and powerful Tetra Grammaton, and facing towards the east, as you will remember from your seminar in the Magic of the Runes, we seal all of our works with the rune SIG. So we will extend our right hand and extending our index finger. We will draw the shape of a lightning and we will chant the mantra S like this. And with that, we bring our practice to an end. So dear friends, this has been our practice with the Rune Fa. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Keep practicing and may all beings 